Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Church for Mass during the day, for Christmas. Merry Christmas. Our Lord is born, was born last night, several times at our children's Mass. We had at 8 p.m. where we had all our kids and we had Father Norbert playing the guitar and singing with them. And all we, as we started yesterday's Christmas Mass, Christmas Eve Mass, we invited all the kids to come up to the creche. And as Father Stefan processed out of the sacristy, we all waited by the creche for the arrival of the Lord. And that's a beautiful thing. Our Lord in the Gospel tells us that we are to become like kids, right? And that's how our hearts are to be, to await for the newborn Christ who's coming and who has come. The beauty and the simplicity of the creche this year is that it's supposed to bring our hearts closer to the reality of Christmas. This is not supposed to be a beautiful Italian Renaissance creche. It's not just to look at and adore, but it's actually to, so it brings the mystery of our salvation so much closer to all of us. So as you pass out, say a prayer in front of it, and don't maybe have too many theological meditations, but just take it in. Take in the hay, take in the reality of what it is, because that was the intention of St. Francis, to bring in the reality of Christmas so much more tangible to all of us. For some of our announcements are, um, as a fundraising for our steeple goes, we're very close to hitting $100,000. We're just $1,000 shy, so that's a credit to your commitment to the place and your constant generosity. Um, as you know, our goal is 168, and we're almost 100,000 in. So thank you for your amazing generosity and for how good you've been to the parish and the many actions we've had, the flower sale, the card sale, the pierogi sale, all these proceeds have been going towards our steeple and we're on a good trajectory. So thank you for that this Christmas. Now let us prepare our hearts to really prepare for the mystery. As Christ comes in the Eucharist, so did he come in Bethlehem, in a stable, in the poverty of the world, he comes into the poverty of our hearts. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, in troibo ad altare Dei, beatificat juventutem, ad iutorium nostrum in nomine Domini, procedamus in pace. Merry Christmas. Please join us and sing our entrance hymn number 466, Adeste Fideles, O Come All Ye Faithful. Four six six Adeste Fidelis O come all ye faithful.
child is born for us, and the son is given to us. His scepter of power rests upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Messenger of Great Counsel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. At the beginning of this Holy Mass, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare our hearts to celebrate these most sacred mysteries of our faith. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my faults and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Holy Mass, we pray for the repose of the soul of Eugeniusz Kaczówka. The intention is requested by Sister Terena, Teresa Piezak and family. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, Grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry. Together they shout for joy. For they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. So be reading from the uh, beginning of the letter to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters. In times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe. Who is the refulgence of his glory? 
the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him, and without Him nothing came to be. What came to be through Him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, were not born nor not by nat natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory us of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received, grace in place of grace. 
Because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, the beginning of the gospel, of the Holy Gospel according to John, brings us something very, very special. Some words about the Word, the Word of God, the unspoken Word of God, eternal and everlasting, the Word which created the whole world. Everything what is, what has been, and what will come. Everything what we have and everything what we are, who we are, everything comes from Him. God spoke His word and everything was created. This word of God is given also us. Therefore, in every Holy Mass, In every worship, in every prayer, we read from the gospel, from the word of God. But this unspoken word of God, which created everything, also human race, you and me, this word of God wanted to be with us, to share our life, to be a part of this created world. So God decided that this word of him, the second person in the most holy trinity, his only begotten son, will become man. God chose the most blessed and pure Virgin Mary and prepared her through all the graces to become mother of this word, mother of God. God sent his angel Gabriel, with only one question to Mother Mary, would you like to be the mother of God? And she said, yes, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be, let it be done according to your word. And so Mary became blessed with the word of God, filled with grace. She became mother of Jesus, the only one person in the whole world chosen by God and filled with immaculate graces. Christmas Day, we celebrate the birth of this word of God. Christmas Day is Jesus' birthday. The word became flesh, dwelt among us shared this life, human life, in everything. And so, today on this Christmas day, we celebrate the coming of this word to us. Therefore, this beautiful liturgy today, in every prayer, in every word, we see how the word of God is reaching us. Jesus Christ is now with us. Here in the liturgy, in the most holy sacrifice of the mass, and also in your everyday life. Jesus came to us to stay with you and me. This is what we receive in this Holy Mass and in every Eucharist, the blessing of word eternal, the blessing of Jesus Christ who shares our life forever. Christmas Day is the day of many changes in our life because nothing is as it used to be. God came to this world to 
stay with you. With the blessing and the end of this Holy Mass, you will be filled with grace, with the grace of baby Jesus. And you will be invited to bring these graces and blessings to your homes and families. This is our Christian faith, which shows us the most beautiful sight of our God, humble, silent, God is with us. And indeed, in our everyday life, in all the struggles and problems we have in this world, we are now blessed with this power of God, with his light. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, the light in our sanctuary, the light on Christmas trees, the light in the church, it's a symbol and picture of life eternal. Everything what is dark in this world can be enlightened and blessed and changed. So let us celebrate this birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us go to him and join Mother Mary and Joseph in this worship because Jesus Christ is now with us. Baby Jesus brings blessing and light for you and me. Today we are celebrating the mystery of the Incarnation, so coming of the Word of God to us. It's a sign of our Christian Catholic faith in the profession of faith that the words and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. We all kneel today as a sign of worship and our prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken for the prophets. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate the newborn King, let us praise our prayers before our loving Father. We pray for the Church, the body of Christ in the world, especially for Pope Francis, our Bishop Frank, all the clergy and religious in our diocese. May God bless their efforts to share the good news with others. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders and diplomats of nations, may the gospel message of peace inform their work to always work 
for justice in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the sick, especially our parishioners and the dying, may God comfort them and bless their caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in our parish discerning a call to the priesthood or consecrated life, may the Lord bless them and keep them on their spiritual journey. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> For all who have died, may they find eternal rest and joy in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the intentions that we hold to the silence of, the, of our hearts, May the newly born Christ child bring light into all of our darkness. Let us pray to the Lord. Eternal Father, in the birth of your only Son, we glimpse the glory of your kingdom and the promise of a share in your eternal life. On this holy day, hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. We ask this through your Son, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing our offertory hymn, number 457, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. 457, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Al Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all things. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day, when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught by up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Lenus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept the oblation of your service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray. 
to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon the sufferings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of, the, of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, to your altar on high, in the, sign of, in the sight of the, your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and trust in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who for sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, 
through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion hymn is number 453, Silent Night, 453, Silent Night.
let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world, born of this way, is the offer of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you, Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to thank all of you for building for this parish community, for being here, praying with us, supporting this church and our church family. And I wish you, in the name of Father Stefan and our whole team, uh, I wish you a very blessed and Merry Christmas. May God bring you peace and light and blessing for you and your dear ones. And may God bless also our parish community, our parish family, all the families here at St. Michael's in Bridgeport, and all you of you, dear friends, who pray with us with live streams, online internet, May God's grace touch every heart here in Bridgeport and all over the world. Merry Christmas. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join us our ending hymn, uh, number 464, Joy to the World, 464, Joy to the World.